Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be color sanding and buffing on the 68 Mustang known as Jade. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to see more. Now, let me clarify something. I did say color sanding. I'm technically not color sanding. I am wet sanding the clear coat on this car. Color sanding refers to if you have like a single stage paint and you're going to wet sand it, you know, no clear coat, and you're going to sand the color itself and then buff it and everything like that. This is a two stage paint, base coat, clear coat. So what I'm dealing with is a couple, you know, little nibs here and there, um, very subtle orange peel. I mean, it turned out really nice, so there's not much to deal with. Um, but I want to take care of those before I, you know, finish putting things together. Now what I'm going to do, there's a couple things. Uh, I'm going to wet sand it again, but I, in some areas I'm going to use 600. Now this may be a little risky because 600 can be pretty aggressive. What I want to do is I will use a block and I will sand, but I'm not trying to smooth everything out. All I'm doing is breaking down the initial orange peel just a little bit to save myself some time with the other sandpaper. So that's what I will do with that. Also, I will likely use this if there's any runs, which I know there are, uh, some sags and stuff. I will use this to break down the runs. Now that may be a whole different uh, video that I do on that as far as addressing the runs. Beyond that, I will be using, after the 600, a 1200 grit wet sandpaper. Uh, likely, and I know I will go to 1500. And then I will go to a 2000. And then the final, final sand before buff is going to be with 3000 in this soft pad. This is a Merca product. Uh, basically, you put this on your DA and you use an interface pad so you're not being aggressive with it. And it has foam. So it just rides around, you know, on the surface of the car and it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't do much, but it does help. The tricky part with doing wet sanding is where do you sand, how do you sand, how aggressive do you get? And there's, there's a ton of videos out there, I'm sure, but I'm just going to kind of show you what I'm working on and how I'm doing it. So let's take a look at the car. Now I've shown a video where I sprayed the base and clear on it and I walked around the car and I can tell you what you're seeing in the camera is not the color of the car. This shows it's blue, it is more green, and I'm going to try to color correct that and see if that helps. So as you look at it, here's the reflection of the light in the side of the car and you can probably see, maybe see, the texture that is part of that. Also there's little, you know, little nibs and stuff that are in the paint and up on the roof here I want to show you that I've already sanded this and I've sprayed some JX101 on top and of course there's still fuzzies and stuff in, in the, on top of the uh, clear coat but that may help you see, hopefully see, the difference in between that light and this light down here. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But what I've done is I've come over to this side of the car and look it's not shiny anymore. I started off with 600 and again went through the different levels of the wet sand sandpaper. Did all that on this side. Um, I mean, it, it's smooth. I've gotten rid of 90% of the orange peel, I would say. If you look, you'll see some here down in this radius. And some of this you don't really want to try to get out because you're, you're in an area where you can be sanding and cause more problems. Uh, same way up here, you know, just the edge of the uh, trunk opening here. I did not get over onto that edge. Again, you got to be careful because you can sand and be sanding and get all the way up here on top and break through because this is going to be your thinnest area on any kind of corner. So be cautious of that. This area right here, I'm probably not going to do much with. I may experiment a little bit, but at this point, uh, I may take a clay bar and work this and try to smooth it up. Up here on the roof, I've done I've done the you know the full sanding all the way to the 3,000 wet, and of course it's not not shiny. You know it shouldn't be. Um, I do have a new buffer that I'm going to be using, and I'll go over some of the stuff with that. But I just wanted to show you where I'm at on 
this side of the car. So I will do some sanding on the driver's side just to show you what it's like. And I also have a time lapse. I may, I may do it all in time lapse. Uh, I did a time lapse of the roof when I sanded on it. So maybe that'll help. But you can also, I hope the camera picks it up. I mean, you can see, maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell with the camera how much it sees. I know what the eye, eye catches versus what the camera can be different. Um, but like, well, you can see the reflection of the fan. Now, that's in a sanded roof. That's not buffed or anything yet. So, I think I'll set up the time-lapse camera and uh, start sanding on this quarter panel. Okay, sorry about the lawnmower noise, but I have my door open. Neighbor's mowing his yard. Uh, what you maybe can see now is some of what I was referring to as like orange peel. Up here, this is a lot smoother right there. But you come forward and you can see where it's shiny. There's still some light orange peel, let's say. Still a little up here going along. There's a little dust nib. I don't know how well you can see that. Looking straight on, there's a you know pretty good size dust nib right there. And I say pretty good size, it's, it's really small. But what I'll do, you know, this is just showing that with 600. And, you know, with the time lapse, I may add some voiceover, but I took the, um, the long block and went over the big part of the panel. Now, if you see some videos, I'll tell you the sand with the shape of the car, with the, like the wind flows across the car. Well, the problem is this panel is not flat. It's a curve. So you really, if you're doing a flat like this with a long hard bar, you're actually creating a flat spot. So I do a crisscross, kind of like I'm doing block sanding. And I know it looks, right now it looks rough, but that's part of it. You're just going to see the high and low spots. Now if you'll notice, it's really shiny right there and more dull up here. That's just showing me a, technically a low spot in the clear. And so I'll go over this more, but once I did that long block, then I took a stiff block, short, continued with a 600, went over it some more in little areas, and then I went with the soft block. And that allows me to get into a radius and stuff like that and not create an edge. So this is just the first part and I'll continue working on it. Okay, so now I've gone over it again uh, a little bit with 600 in some of the nib areas that I talked about and then the 1200 and 1500. So you can still see there's a little bit of texture here, a little here, you know, and, and, and that's not bad. Most of that will never be seen when it's buffed. Uh, back here, things look really good. Hard to see any, you know, texture at all. And if you notice, I'm really not doing anything up here in this corner. I'm getting close. You can still see the, see the shine, but I'm not digging onto that corner. Some way back here, I'm trying to avoid the edge. And then really, I'm not even working this lower section. Sorry. And really, I don't plan to work this lower section, or I normally wouldn't, except I've got some runs. So I was, you know, I knew they were there. And I may do a separate video on just taking care of that. Um, but for now, this is what I'm working on. Uh, there's still a little, little texture here, pretty minor. You got to be careful, again, around any type of edge. So you can still see it's very shiny there shiny here um, you know a little texture down here still but that's normal that's the way it's going to look for now now what I, the next round is going to be 2000 and then I will do everything with the 3000 pad on the DA which is what is right here with the interface pad and so that that allows for a lot of cushion so it's really just riding along. 
So I'm going to continue on. I may do a little bit more on the, I may work on the extension while I'm hitting in this area, you know, because I got to get everything ready. But that's where we're at. Okay, this is with the final sand of the 3000 on the DA. So I did the full quarter, uh, the sail panel, and of course the roof I had done previously. And I'm going to take care of the door, this area up here, mm -hmm. the deck filler. Um, I may do something with the tail panel. It probably needs some attention. But once I get everything ready, then we'll come back and talk about buffing. I do want to address something later. And again, this might be in a whole separate video um, about getting rid of this run. Normally you could sand, I tried to sand a little bit on it, but what I found was it's in this transition. You know, this actually dips in slightly right there. So you'd kind of get in trouble doing it. So I have a different idea and I'll address that later. Um, but for now I want to finish getting the rest of the car ready for the buffing process. Okay, so here I'm trying various blocks. I have used the round block that I've used before to do block sanding. And you just have to be very careful when you're doing this. I try not to get too close to the edge, but you will find at times that you'll there's a kind of a bulge, uh, for lack of a better term, at the edge of the door or the quarter panel. And you have to very carefully sand that and try to knock it down as much as you can. Okay, I am not 100% done sanding, but I had to do some buffing. I just had to see how this was going to look before I got too far ahead. So, this is just one, well, two rounds with the wool pad. And I will post all the information in the description for the tool and the pads and the uh, compounds that I'm using. That'll all be in the, in the description. But I just wanted to show you this. This is looking pretty good. Now, I did this quarter panel, the extension. I did the door. And I did this side of the roof. Now the roof probably could have had a little more sanding done to it. I can still see a little texture, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. I don't want to get over overdo the thing and have problems. Um, but I just want to show you the results here. Now this is just again with the wool pad. I still have the two foam pads to go. So this is the wool that I start with, and I think the black pad is next. And then I think it's the uh, and this. Foam, this fine, final polished one, I think, is with this part number. Um, but I'll have all this listed. The compound that I'm cutting with initially, I even wrote it on there, wool 36060. I think uh, I have a little notes written on these things. Yeah, this, this one, the black foam 06064 with that one. And then... 06068. I even made myself a little note sheet that I could keep track of it. So uh, the order, I think I wrote this one wrong, but the order is wool, black, and then the blue. So anyway, I'm going to set up the camera and do some buffing on this side. And as I said, I still have the tail panel to sand. Uh, I still have the cowl to finish sanding, but I just needed to see how this was going to look. So this is what it looked like, you know, before any buffing. And that's after, you know, buffing. So let's see what happens.
Okay, so as you saw, I put on some compound and then I spread it around with the pad itself and then I started to buff. Now the RPM is at a thousand and I'm using, for lack of a better description, the portion of the pad from 12 to about 3 o'clock and I'm keeping pressure on that right upper corner. I'm not using the bottom, I'm not using the left side. Because of the rotation of the buffer, that works best. So as you can already see, the clear coat is starting to polish. It's starting to change into a more clear finish. So I'll just keep going with this, go over the whole panel, and we'll continue on. I'm going to point out, I'm running at 1,000 RPM right now. Switch is on 1,000. You can see I'm not just staying in one spot. I'm moving back and forth, steady pace. I'm also not laying this flat on the car. I'm using a portion of it. So basically, if I'm, I'm working it, I want to put pressure, slight pressure, not a lot, on this surface, which is kind of away from me. So when I'm doing this, You'll see as I come, come across here, on this edge, I can work my way down like that because it's cutting onto the edge. If I was coming this way, it would be a lot harder if you want to dig into that corner. So that's what I'm doing. I'm keeping this surface, this portion of the pad against the quarter panel. Okay, and again, 1,000 RPM. So I'm going to keep going here. Try to get this area taken care of, and then we'll go on and do some more. Now it'll tell you on the compound bottle to work in about a two foot square area. So basically you're trying not to extend yourself too far and have to, you know, run long runs with the uh, compound. So just focus on staying within a, a small area. So that is, you know, the wool pad with the, again, with the 06, uh, 36060 compound. And there's still, you can still see a little bit of scratches. I mean, I can. Uh, but what's going to happen is I'm going to go over this again, just like I did, but I'm going to increase the speed to 1200. And what that will do 
is it'll add some more heat into the process and that'll help flatten out or smooth out any of the little tiny scratches. You know, when you've got these things spinning, you have to be careful. You don't want a high speed. I prob probably won't go over 1200 the whole time. Uh, I've seen some people go as high as 1400, but that's all I'm going to do. And then I'll go over it, uh, like I said, again with the wool, the compound, and then the other two sets of pads will come later. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to run it over and do the same thing I just did. I also need to go over and do the roof. Now, the rest of this will be, or a lot of this will be um, time lapse, which I have running right now. So I'm going to continue with that. Okay, I'm ready to do the next round of buffing. The whole car has been done with the wool pad, and I'll point this out. Somebody else mentioned this to me. I did not realize this until now, but the wool pad and the compound, I have it written on there, it says wool, right? Well, if you notice, it has a white top. The white goes with the wool. The next round, I'm using the black pad. Look at that. It's got a black cap. And, surprisingly enough, the final round that I'm going to do will be with the blue pad. And guess what? It's got a blue cap. A little bit of information for you. I also realized something when I was, uh, I was doing some work down here. I made another video where I took out the runs that were down here in the bottom of the quarter. Turned out really nice. I rebuffed that with the wool pad, and I didn't realize until now, like this little collar that you squeeze to release to take these off. Well, you don't need to squeeze it to put them on. I thought you did. If you just center it up and push, it locks on. So now you know that. Okay. So here's here's the deal. I'm going to apply some compound on here buff it with the foam pad and then I'll finish out the quarter and probably all the rest will be on time lapse uh, just going to be easier that way but I'll get started on this I'm going to run at 1200 rpm and uh, just show you how it works Now normally I wouldn't even go down here, but since I had to take out those runs, I'm going to go ahead and work my way down into that area as well. Again, I worked in small areas, and with this black pad, I ran it at 1200 RPM. I think with the blue pad, I ended up doing 1400, and it worked out much better. So you may want to experiment a little bit with the speeds, but you don't want to go really high on this stuff. You don't want to be in the 2000s or 3500. Trust me.
the thing about doing these steps is it's very tedious. Uh, you have to be very meticulous and careful. And the car will turn out really nice, but as you will see later on, I had problems with the paint. And all of this that I've done will have to get redone anyway. That's how it goes sometimes. Okay, so I wanted to show you the final buffing that I've done to the car and I was really excited to bring it outside and I wanted to show you how it looked. Now, I'm, I'm happy with the buffing, the sanding, the polishing, all that stuff. It has turned out better than I expected. And uh, hopefully you can gain some information from this process and maybe use it on your project. Um, I'm going to show you something else here in just a minute, but you know, all the effort it takes to make these things look good pays off at the end. As you can see, I put the door handles on so I can get the doors open. But I have something pretty important I want to show you that means that what you see right now, all of this is for naught. What does that mean? It means I'm starting over. Yes, I'm starting over. I was looking at the, I, I placed the fender on just to get a look at the color transition and I thought it looked a little odd right there at the door gap. And then I came back here and I caught the sun. I don't know if you can see it or not. But what I'm seeing is a very light spot in the middle of the door and it's actually kind of dark up there at the front. What does that mean? Well, it means I sprayed wrong. And I've told, so told you before, I, I don't like to spray paint. This is why. One little flaw, and you're starting over. Now, it has been suggested, I talked to some other people, hey, maybe you could work from you know this line down, respray that, clear it. I don't trust any of you know, that process because this color is so unique that it's not gonna work. Um, at this point, at this point, well, first of all, I am so frustrated. I'm just frustrated with myself and with how this looks, but I'm sharing this information with you because I want you to see and I want you to learn. Uh, what probably happened, as I was at the fender on the door and I was making sure I hit the uh, gap, uh, I, I may have just gotten heavy on that area. And in spraying, you know, it, it may have just that I, I kind of went too fast over the middle of the door. I don't know. Uh, but the point being that if, if I can teach you something or you can learn something from my mistakes, then, you know, that's why I'm sharing this information. So, what does that mean? Again, it means I'm starting over. I'm going to repaint the whole car. The problem with trying to do a certain area by itself is that area will still stand out. And as good as this looks, it can look even better. Uh, the clear coat that is on here, I hope the wind's not affecting us too much. The clear coat that is on here will act as a sealer, and I can respray it with base, reshoot it with clear, and start buffing all over again. Well, that'll be the end of this video. You know, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. You can do all the prep work in the world and have something show up in this final step. It just ruins it for you and that's that's where I'm at right now uh, the advantage here is I've already sprayed the jams um, I can I'll use foam in these gaps so I don't get any overspray back in the jams I'm going to prep reprep the hood the deck lid all the exterior pieces and they will be on the car for the next spray and that'll guarantee me or should if I do everything correctly should guarantee me that I have good color across everything. You know, frustrating, disappointing. But again, I'd rather share it with you so you know not to make the same mistakes 
or maybe it'll help you in your project and you know down the road you can benefit I'd rather be honest with you and show you the facts show you the truth than to think it's like some sort of TV show where everything just magically happens so anyway uh, thank you for watching you know thanks for subscribing I want to thank my patrons who have been supporting me through this whole process I appreciate their support very much and uh, man do over that's where I'm at right now very frustrating <laughs> anyway I'll get a video put together and we'll see how it turns out so until next time take care of yourselves see ya